All right, folks, so it's time to take apart this motor uh, that I got from my brother Dave's house. He found it in the field on his property. Um, it's huge, it's heavy. It's uh, not as big as probably some of the ones that uh, Big Stack Decasting has, uh, has scrapped, but um, this is the first time I've taken apart a big motor like this, and I've already started to work at it. Man, if it wasn't for that portaban over there, I would have been in, in deep poop. Um, I had to, I mean, everything's so rusted that there was no way to take the, the bolts and screws and all that stuff out. Uh, right now, I'm still trying to figure out how to really finish taking it apart. Um, but, so I had, there was like these big metal pieces going this way. I had to cut those off with the portaban just so I can get in here. Um, side here there was a big knob thing attached to this that I had to cut off with the porta band um, and as well as you know, all the bolts in the corners another one down here that I had to literally just like slice straight in to get through it was the only way I could get that bolt cut so it's it's getting loose but still not out <clears throat> but one of the things that I'm, I'm noticing about this is that um, so number one, we've got all these copper windings in here. This whole plate right here is copper. There's a lot of big brass chunks in there. Um, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I scratched it. This whole thing that goes around is all brass. So, you know, there's going to be you know, some nice metal in there to, to melt down. Um, but, you know, again, the trick is going to be getting the sucker apart. So, um... Yeah, so th this video is going to be kind of chunky. Um, <laughs> I don't think I'll, I'll be able to film the whole process of, of taking it apart. <clears throat> because I don't know how I'm going to do it for one. And it'll probably take you know, a long time to get it pulled apart. And then editing that video down to something that's you know, not going to put people to sleep. So, yeah. So there we go. All that in there. It's too bad rust isn't valuable. It'll be rich. So yeah, so the next step, hopefully I'll have this center piece out, which is kind of loose, but again, because of all the corrosion and stuff, it's kind of stuck in there, and I might have to try and figure out how to get this thing off. I, don't, I can't fit the porta ban down in here to slice, but I'll figure something out. So there you go. All right, so I just got that piece off using a sawzall. Um, this is a pretty tight fit to get between this thing and on the top of that I couldn't use the, the porta band. And uh, I, I gotta say, uh, I think I shook something loose that was important um, inside me. That was, uh, I mean, that's, that's a good two inches thick like oof, hot as hell uh, solid steel um, but yeah so now this whole thing in the middle should pop out the other end and um, yeah, getting that copper out should be fairly easy I'm just gonna clean up all the friggin rust that came off of it now I know a lot of people are gonna be saying well you know there's probably an easier way there's nuts and things like that screws to take off bolts that'll loosen that up well Keep in mind that this has been sitting in the northern Maine woods for at least 50 to 60 years. So, yeah, none of those bolts, nothing was, I mean, look at that. Nothing's turning. I, I, I tried my best with every method that I know how with the other bolts and nothing was coming out. But look, pretty copper. All right, more come. All right, so I got the stator cleaned out, all the, the copper, I checked everything around it, inside and outside, uh, make sure there's no brass or other metals. Um, got this bucket of copper, uh, that's probably six or seven pounds maybe. <coughs> but the armature, um, this is actually looking pretty promising, like there's gonna be probably just as much copper in this thing as the other, as you know, the other part of it. Uh, it goes in there pretty deep, plus this outer ring, is solid copper as well. Big chunks of brass in there. 
see where I scratched it to check, see what kind of metal it was. So that's the progress. Um, this came out surprisingly easy. The copper was really like brittle, um, probably from old age or something. But uh, yeah, it came out pretty easy. I just used uh, bolt cutters to cut the, uh, the loops on the end and then uh, pry bar to pull them all out on the other side. And yeah, about 10 minutes, I was able to clear that all out. So that's that section. And uh, we will finish that up, then I'll go weigh the bucket. The bucket weighs a couple pounds. We'll see how much it weighs all together and then come back. All right, so the armature, that took quite a bit longer to get the copper off. Um, but I mean, it all came off. Um, all the wire anyway, I and mean, it's not like, you know, most of the newer ones that you find that have like some kind of like epoxy or weird stuff woven them on. Um, and there was a lot of weird, like graphite, I don't know, some kind of black powder. My nose started running faster than Usain Bolt, but uh, I, I don't know if that's related or not. But so now I have to figure out how to separate this wheel, which I believe is solid copper. Um, I filed it down a little bit and saw some pink in there. Um, so there's that. And then this whole section here, this is all solid brass and the rest of it's just heavy iron. Um, so that's where I am in the process. All right, so the motor is completely done. I've got this big bucket of copper plus this pile of copper um, that's got, I mean, geologists out there might enjoy this reference, but it looks like mica. Um, I, I, I don't know how else to describe it. It's just like this thin, like really flaky, shiny, like hundreds of layers that were around it. Um, so there's that. This is brass with a couple of steel rings on it. That'll come off in the melt. This other piece of solid brass. Um, this is all solid brass as well, with you know some steel again that'll you know float to the top when you melt it. Um, and, and there was a, a lot of brass hidden inside there. This whole thing right here, I was going to give up uh, when I got all the copper off it, but you know I accidentally nicked the end here and I thought it was brass. I'm like, eh, might as well. I've got nothing better to do. So I pulled all that out. There's some other junk in there. Um, I think it's aluminum, I'm not quite sure. I mean, it's oxidized, it's non-magnetic. So, I mean, it's, it's a metal. I mean, I, I filed it and it got shiny, so I, it's something. Um, but yeah, so there's that. And a whole lot of steel. Um, next step is to weigh this all up. All right, so. We've got uh, five pounds, 5.5 ounces of brass. And no, it's zero out. There we go. We got half a pound of mystery metal. And Last but not least, Believe. sorry, I feel this. My phone. Mm -hmm. All right, and twenty-two pounds, nine point three ounces of copper. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I I'd say that was worth it. All right, so all in all, um, filming with my phone here, which is uh, I got smacked in the eye with a piece of metal earlier, leave a little mark there. Nice. Um, so yeah, so um, all in all, those big motors, um, yeah, you're gonna make more money if you take them apart. Um, Preferably work on newer motors, ones that haven't been sitting out in the woods for forever that are more rust than anything else. Um, 
a lot easier to take apart, I would imagine. This one was a bit of a beast. Um, oh, and also in the way in, I've got enough iron and steel to literally break my scale, so no, I'm not gonna do that because I need that for eBay and stuff. Uh, so yeah, so um, big old motor. I've got 20 some odd pounds of copper, five plus pounds of brass that I'll be melting down and uh, making. This is just confusing because I can't see where the lens, there it is, so that's where I need to look. I need to look right there so that it looks like I'm looking at you and not off to the side, which is even weirder. Eh, sorry, I'm all dirty. I've been at this for a while. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> so, the uh, the big old motor. Um, again, thanks to my brother Dave for um, letting me grab that. And it's it's been the uh, world's heaviest paperweight on my bench. It's been there for God, months. Um, but yeah, with, uh, with the right tools, the, uh, the Porta Band was a lifesaver. Um, they're expensive as hell, but man, if you get a lot of like transformers and things where you have to cut through steel to get copper, definitely, definitely worth it. Um, if you do a lot of it, I mean, those things are like three to four hundred dollars. So, you yeah. know, well, the Milwaukee ones anyway. And if you're going to get a tool, you might as well get Milwaukee, right? That's a shout out to Ernie. Um, another friend, the guy who let me borrow his tools. <laughs> So again, thanks for watching. Um, comment, like, subscribe, share, hit that bell, do all that fun stuff. Um, and you know, the weather we're having this winter has been crazy mild. So if we have another, you know, 50 degree day, I might melt all this down. So I do have some other buckets of copper to melt down. I probably have a good couple hundred pounds that I need to melt down into bars. So five bars or five pound bars. That's 20, so about 40, 40 bars maybe. That'd be cool. I'd be happy with that. See you on the next one.